Peter said in, in, in Acts 3.19, they're all coming to him. He said, you put the Son of God on the cross. You, op- you brought him to open shame. You put the Son of God on the cross. And they all said, Peter, what must we do to be saved? He said, repent and be converted. Do you know we put Christ on the cross? There's another thing we don't like to talk about. We put him on the cross. That's the reason. And I can just hear it now during Peter's sermon as he's, as, as he's preaching. The guy says, not me, not me. I'm the, I'm the man who took the sledgehammer and drove the nails into his hands. Not me, Peter. Peter says, yes, repent, repent. But not me. I'm the one that took the crown of thorns and pressed it on his head. And I saw the blood begin to drip down. I couldn't get redemption, Peter. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Even the Roman soldier who hated Jesus after Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lama zabachini, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They said he's calling for Elisha. No, he's not calling for Elisha. He's calling for God. And then the Bible says, he gave up his ghost. And what happened? The, 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 The whole veil that covered the Holy of Holies that only the priest could go to only one time of year to get access to the Father. Only he could go. That veil that was inches thick was rent from the top to the bottom saying God says it's done, it's over, it's finished. I've given you the access. You don't, you don't need a priest. You don't need a Pope. You don't need Mary. You need Christ. Christ. He, he, the, the, it was ripped from the top to the bottom. The ground shook. Stones were split. Even the dead were raised from the dead. The centurion shul, soldier was quaking. He said, surely this is the Son of God. Surely this is the Son of God. And we sit here in our smug, nice thing, saying, I might consider it someday, as if we're doing God a favor. We don't get to judgment seat and kind of talk our way into it. You bow at the foot of the cross or you die in eternity separated. There's no other options, folks. That's why I get so passionate because God has radically changed my life and He can change yours too. But it's not going to happen unless something dies in you. You need prayer for salvation. You need prayer to fully surrender your life. You need prayer to be the men or women that God's called you to be. I'm going to ask you to come forward for this very purpose. Not to be set apart, but all of us should be up here. If the truth be told, all of us should be up here. I'd be the first one saying, Lord, I need you. I need you on this side of the cross as much as I did on that side of the cross. Lord, take away this anger and this fear. Lord, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a father. I want to hold my children, not get upset at them. Lord, I need you. I can't preach unless you fill me with your Spirit of God. I can't get up there and trick the people in posture and jockey. I don't know. All I know is you, and I'm just going to proclaim your truth because you redeemed me. You bought me. You changed my life. If I could take you, I'd grab you and say, you've got to take hold of this resurrection life. Something in you has to die. Unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it will not bear fruit. Unless a human, a prideful human heart does not break, the power of God's redemption cannot come through.